What's the worst act of negligence you've ever seen that could have cost dozens of lives? I'll never forget the summer I worked as an engineering intern for the city. I was fresh out of my second year in college, eager to learn and proud that I'd landed a position in the infrastructure department. I thought my days would be filled with drafting plans and crunching numbers, but instead, I ended up witnessing something that made me lose complete faith in the people entrusted with public safety. There was a small suspension bridge on the outskirts of town, picturesque, painted white, spanning over a slow green river. It was the only connection between a rural farming community and the main highway. Every day, school buses, delivery trucks, and families in minivans crossed it without a second thought. In June, our team got a call. The bridge needed its routine safety inspection. My supervisor, Mr. Harding, told me I could come along to get some field experience. I was excited this was real-world engineering, not just equations in a classroom. When we arrived, I expected thorough testing measuring structural stress, checking every joint, inspecting under the deck. But Harding seemed rushed. He glanced over the main supports, tapped a few bolts with a hammer, scribbled something on his clipboard, and muttered, good enough. I noticed a hairline crack running along one of the load-bearing beams. It wasn't massive, but it was there like a faint vein in marble, running longer the more I looked. I pointed it out. Doesn't that need further testing? I asked. Harding didn't even bend down to check. It's just paint chipping, he said, moving on. His tone wasn't reassuring. It was dismissive, like I'd just asked if the sky was falling. Back at the office, he filed the report. Bridge safe for use. Next inspection, 12 months. Couldn't shake the image of that crack, so I started digging through the old inspection records. Two years ago, another inspector had marked the same area for monitoring. There was no follow-up, no repair order. It was like it had vanished into thin air. A week later, we had a heavy rainstorm. The river swelled, current quickened, and traffic still flowed over that bridge like nothing was wrong. That Friday, I stayed late to finish some drafting work. At 7 p.m., my phone buzzed an emergency alert. Bridge collapse on County Road 14. Multiple vehicles in water. My stomach dropped. I drove straight there. Police cars blocked the road, their lights flashing across the dark water. Part of the bridge's central span had given way, dropping an SUV and a pickup truck into the river. Miraculously, everyone survived, but one man was pulled out with a broken leg, and a mother had to be rescued from the roof of her sinking car. As divers were worked under spotlights, I saw it that same cracked beam, now sheared clean in half. Rust bloomed from the break like an ugly wound. News crews swarmed the scene the next morning. Harding avoided the cameras, but I heard him telling a colleague, no one could have predicted it. My blood boiled. Could have. Could have. We both saw the warning signs. The mayor ordered an investigation. I was called in to give a statement, and I told them everything the ignored crack, brushed off concern, the falsified, safe rating. Harding was suspended within days. Later, I learned he'd been signing off on inspections without proper checks for years to keep the schedule moving and avoid overtime costs. Costs. The bridge is gone now. In its place is a steel-reinforced replacement built to modern safety codes. But every time I drive past, I think of the what-ifs. What if it had been a school bus that day? What if the current had been stronger? Negligence isn't always loud. Sometimes it's a quiet shrug, a scribble on a clipboard, and a choice to walk away when someone should have stayed. I learned that summer that cutting corners doesn't just save time, it gambles with lives. And sometimes, the only difference between a normal day and a tragedy is one person deciding to do their job properly. That bridge taught me more about ethics than any engineering textbook ever could.